real quick before we jump into this video, I just want to let you guys know, if you have not already heard, I am giving away my beautiful 2005 Chevy 2500 HD Duramax to one of you guys. All you have to do is go over to workforwardapparel.com. Every $5 spent gets you entered to win this absolute beautiful truck. Full complete paint job on her, custom powder coated wheels, flawless interior. You do not want to miss out on this giveaway. Workforwardapparel.com. Let's roll to this video. <music> What's up and good morning guys, welcome back to another video. We're out here on the continuation of the trenching we're doing for the Rhino Ranch Gate Project. And well, we've got our secret weapons here. We've got Abel and Poppy doing the last little bit of hand digging there because if you guys remember when we were doing all this trenching, I decided to stop right about yonder because like that's where all the main water, main power and all that comes into the house. I didn't want to risk hitting any of that. So the last little like 15 feet or so are getting hand dug. And honestly, it's the only way things can get dug right now being that my Mini X is down for the count. So the joys of owning your own equipment and not renting it is when uh, something happens, you kind of got to fix it yourself. So the other day when I was using it, um, every once in a while, like gravel will get up in the track a little bit and you kind of have to like clean the tracks out before you can get like full power on like trying to go forward or turn or anything like that. So it's kind of acting like that yesterday. And then I picked it up off the ground, spun the tracks a little bit, felt like they got cleaned out, tracked all the way down from the house down to out here, got about six feet of backfill going, went to go move a little bit, and I noticed the track had slipped, and I'm like, oh man, that sucks. Well, right as I looked down, I saw that this sprocket had also just like gone rolling by. That's not good, that, that should probably be attached. What looks like happened is, at some point, the bolts that hold the sprocket right there, looks like they kind of worked their way out, and then the last three, which you can probably see one of right there, obviously couldn't take the pressure and they ended up just shearing off, which that's gonna suck trying to get those out today because I believe they're all Loctited in. So yeah, we're gonna be fighting that, trying to extract Loctited in, sheared off, extra hardened bolts. And clearly they don't mess around because they put a ton of them in here. There's what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. 11 per sprocket. So we're gonna run to the Bobcat dealership right now, grab the correct bolts for this, and then have fun trying to get these things out. Just over here inspecting this other side to make sure that these are all on. It's really weird that that many worked their way out. I mean, maybe when the first one starts is a chain reaction, but that's a lot of bolts to not be in there. So to the Bobcat dealership we go, and hopefully I don't end up like falling in love with a bunch of stuff while we're there and buying stuff that we don't need. I mean, we do need, but I don't need to buy right now. Oh yeah, guys, we're definitely gonna get in trouble here. See, we got us a E50 out here. Significantly larger machine than what I have. Look at the size of that blade. Ooh. We need to step our game up, guys. Looks like everything up here is pretty much the same, other than you do have the new screen that they got that they're putting in their skid steers and stuff with your little controller right there. I like that. I don't know what the heck that... Oh, that's actually the AC vent if you get the enclosed cab. So it looks like they're covering that. Well, guys, I'm proud to say we made it out relatively cheap. Still more money than I plan on spending, but good news is, or bad news, they're like three months out on any buckets, so I couldn't purchase any of the buckets I wanted to, which would have been exponentially more expensive than what we did today. But we got all of our bolts there, which are also $2 more per bolt in person than they are online. Well, we made a quick pit stop over at the shop and Zach outfitted me here with uh, some of his extraction bits so we can hopefully extract those broken off bolts. We've got two different types here. We got the, uh, we got the luxurious snap-on and then we got the Irwins here. So snap-on ones here are just like reverse threaded drill bits that eventually uh, you spin the drill backwards and hopefully at some point they start backing the screw out. I'm gonna spin the excavator around here because I don't feel like working in that mound of dirt. You know, if we're gonna be on the ground, we might as well be comfortable. Shout out to Fern. I believe he got these from like a packaging crate or something, gave them to us. These things are awesome. If you have to sit on, if you have to work on your knees or anything like that. Now, I'm not gonna lie, and it's probably no surprise to anybody, I don't work on slash have never worked on equipment. So this should be pretty interesting. See what we got going on today. But first things first, I'm gonna move this track out of the way if I can, if I can even get it off far enough. So if these things are anything like the skid steers, basically there's like a grease fitting right there, which I know there is a grease fitting right there. Um, you're able to contract these a little bit, which would be that arm right there. That's how you get the track on and then you fill it with grease and it basically spreads those two rollers out and that's what tensions the track. 
I don't know where you release the tension on this. I see where you fill the grease. I don't know where you release the grease. Hopefully James comes over in a little bit and can tell me where it's at on these things, but it's in there somewhere. Let's go number four. I'm thinking we're in the number four world there. See what happens. Slow her down a little bit. Oh, she gonna walk. Okay, okay. So obviously with it being broken, it's not a flat surface. So I'm gonna try and get a little pilot bit in there and hopefully it'll get me centered up on that bad boy instead of it walking around because that thing's all sheared off. Wonder if that's deep enough. It's not deep enough. All right, we might be going all the way through this bad boy. Now I'm gonna give it a shot with the, uh, the fatter one here, the 1964ths just because I don't want to end up drilling all the way through and this thing gets in there and it expands it, it might make it harder to come out. I don't know if that's a thing or not, but I figure let's try it now where we're just gonna grab just the end here. If it doesn't work, we continue to drill all the way through. Let's see what happens, guys. Oh. Oh, she's turning. We lost her, we lost her a little bit. No, come on, come on, come on. It just sucks that we can't go straight in because this thing's in the way, but Oh, 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 look at that. Look at that. Woo! We're ready to go to battle again. I'm gonna jump in there real quick. Rotate that whole drum around. Two more times and we're done. Nice and easy. You can see it spinning around right there. Get it back up to the top. There we go. I feel like that worked too well. I'm kind of nervous. I'm nervous something's gonna happen now. All right, extraction number two. Let's see if she comes out. We might need to go a little deeper with this one. Might have spoke too soon, guys, about things going good on the first one because uh, number two is fighting me. We did get a torch if needed. Hope we don't ever have to pull that out today. You guys ever have to deal with all the traffic in your neighborhood, you know? These, these loud cars that drive by? I don't know. Sounds like the muffler's about to fall off that car over there or something. Some people need to maintain their cars. That, that car is loud. Well guys, we got the cavalry coming. We got James, James's brother. We gotta go all the way around the house now to get over here? All right. I don't know how to tell you, but Ryan's equipment repairs, we don't got no uh, no availability this week. We're busy. Oh, we got a lot of repairs going on out here, but. It's okay, cat machines don't need repairs. Oh, jeez. Everybody go to James's channel uh, at Get Muddy, and you'll see <laughs> every one of these getting worked on. Well, actually, not this beauty. But I've this seen you work I've yet. seen you worked on every other one. Yeah. Partially. My dad breaks half of them, but aside from that. <laughs> it's weird how uh, when James shows up and his brother, things get a little bit easier, but uh, yeah, we opted to not try to attach the drill so we can get a straighter shot at it. So we uh, hammered it in here and well, with a little crescent wrench action, she's coming off pretty easy now. Yep, there she goes. Is that your last one? No. Oh. <laughs> There's five more. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the last one came out super easy. It was just barely in there before it sheared off. Now we get to have some fun here. And then I like how half the bolts have Loctite, half don't. So most of them are going in good. This one doesn't really want to go in. That's probably our main culprit. He looks like he's got some issues around him. So all these are going in except for this one. Um, James is nice enough to run home real quick. He's going to grab a uh, tap and we're going to try and retap those threads. The first couple are kind of gummed up in there. Um, so I guess we're going to pull this back off so we can get in there. Don't know if it'll show up on camera there. Just how gummed up it is inside of there. Zerk feeding. Do you leave it in or do you have to pull it out? Yeah, pull it out. All the way out? Well, typically. It didn't look like it had any grease in there in the first place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You'll see it. <laughs> Want to move that track? Are you good? Yep, keep going. Keep going. You boys appreciate that no only done it a hundred times get some of that out of the way there i'm just glad we use the eco-friendly grease around here guys yeah. i'm glad we're all based. yeah we're all yeah, doing our part 
to be able to full of grease. Shout out to James Dude, for, the for the old lock and lube. Oh, especially on something like this. Yep. Look at that. Right on in. Boom, she's locked on. And then you get to hang out here and have a vacation while this thing fills. All right, y'all, the Mini X is back in action. Now we get the fun stuff started here. So you guys might've seen in the backside of my videos here. James is water buffalo. It's obviously been sitting here. It's been a huge help in doing all the grading, getting enough water out here to uh, actually be able to grade and not be in a giant dust bowl and be able to compact the dirt. Well, when it was sitting here, obviously both rear tires have not enjoyed sitting here for so long. We're gonna try and get them back on the bead here. Got us a couple cans of starter fluid. About to get crafty. <laughs> it's still in there. All of that, right? Woo! <laughs> nope. Maybe. Nope. Maybe. Maybe. Nope. She's being a little stubborn, yeah. <laughs> Thoroughly disappointed in the poof right now. I know, I thought it would have been still on fire. Seriously? Try the other side. Yeah. <laughs> it just needs air. Got the BBB over here. I uh, know. Definitely need to add an onboard compressor to the old uh, single cab there. It's gonna be a ranch truck. Now James is thinking there's a chance that that thing's on the bead. It just needs air now. Like that last little poof kind of did it. So he ran to go grab one of his Peterbilts. And then uh, we're gonna use the air off of that because nothing out here has onboard air right now. I mean, it's a heck of an air compressor you got here. Let's talk about how hard this is right now. Because every time we said easy, nothing works. There it is! Nice. Yeah. There's the trick. Need that air. Now that we've got air in the tires, we're gonna use the Mini X here. Scooch the front of the trailer around, that way they can hook it up to their truck. Well, the tongue jack was a little too low, so we had to pick her back up here. All right, bye trailer. It's been fun. <laughs> Destroyer of pickups. This thing left as a single rear wheel. Now it's a dually. Yeah, like my new whip. Yeah, this thing's a beast. Just kidding. I love Mega Cat short bed dualies. Like my absolute favorite combo right here. My buddy is in the Navy. He got shipped to Hawaii, and uh, they couldn't fit his truck in a container. <laughs> so he's like, "Can I keep it at your place for a couple?" He's like, "Yeah." I like the color match to the paint on the wheels there. Pretty sick truck. I'm not a big two-tone fan, but like this this combo works. Is it like gray or is it green? I think it's green. Size tires, oh, he's 37. So what are they, 12 fives? Animals are like, what's going on? We like that new dually. Who's is that? Or they're just hungry and it's feeding them. Probably probably the second one there. Really, we have a good day at work? Oh, what, what, what scared us? What scared us? Listen, go one day soon, you'll grow tall enough. You're not you're not quite there yet. Yep, I know. You almost got it. Well, now that we got the Mini X up and running and we're kind of a day behind, I should probably jump on it and uh, start doing some backfill as the sun kind of goes down. Baby goats are freaking out because they have no clue where I am, even though like they just watched me get in the Mini X. Girls, I'm right here. Hey. Yeah. I'm right here. Yeah. I'm right here. Yeah. No, up here. There you go. Yep. Yep. I'm right here. Yeah. Oh, we, all right. We forgot I'm here. Hey. Yeah. Come here. Yeah. Oh, all right. We got to pee. That's important. Yeah. Hello. I'm here. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Now you see me. You like it up there? One day we're gonna teach you how to operate, all right? Oh, you, you just, okay. Can you operate better than Dedic? You can be his replacement? There's a lot of stuff up there, huh? No, now you're my height. I'm gonna run over this stuff a few times with the tracks, to kind of break up the big clumps. Now we're not dropping big old clumps on the pipe or anything like that, and it'll actually like fill around it instead of just making big old air pockets. Good thing our tracks are working great now, because uh, we need them to get up on this pile here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And we'll point her down a little bit. Is that a weird angle? That's probably a weird angle, but. Go for it. Doing some plowing. Very thankful for the enclosed cab right now because it is dusty out there. All right, we 
got this section pretty well broken up. Let's do our covering for the water line. Can't even see down in there, it's so dusty. So hopefully, getting hit at the right height. I'll probably run through the shovel real quick and just make sure everything's spread out nice and even before we put the conduit in. Would this be faster with a skid steer? Of course. Do I have a skid steer? No, so work with what you got. Pretty much have to like fill this side, go back, fill this side, wait for the dust to clear over there, and then we can go do over there again, and see where we're at. Well, it's kind of working to just ride on top of this hill and kind of kick everything down in. And it's filling just about the perfect amount here, so I'm gonna continue this for right now. Well, I ended up pushing a little bit too much dirt in at some spots, so I'm just coming through and kind of knocking it down or straddling the footing here. I'm just using the back side of the bucket, that way we don't end up uh, going too deep with the teeth and hitting the pipe or anything. Pretty much gone to the end of the line here, so we're gonna cross back over the footing, and it's pretty easy to do with these excavators. You kind of put your boom off to one side, pick yourself up, then I like to spin the tracks as I rotate the cab. So basically we're up in the air right now, so instead of the cab rotating, the tracks underneath me are gonna rotate because the cab's kind of locked in place with the boom. So as I'm spinning, let's see if I can get you guys where you can maybe see the tracks there. I'll spin the tracks around just so they kind of walk. I mean, you can't see, it's not that track moving, it's the other side, but kind of walks over. We got my blade. We got the blade in the back right there. We can put that down if we would like to hold us for a second. While we lower the boom. Give us, then we can reposition the boom here. Get a little better pick on her. And then from there, spin the cab a little bit more. Should be good enough there. Come back over to this side. Pick up the slack and boom out as we're crossing over. And there we go. We totally realized that camera was in the wrong spot. But regardless, um, we crossed. Crossing just sideways across a footing or a trench is really easy. Um, when you're over a trench straddling it and trying to pick up and turn without caving everything in, that's where it gets a little trickier, but fun stuff. Alrighty y'all, well we are moving along here. Um, Abel went ahead and got the main water connected in, so that kind of tees off right there. It's got its own shutoff valve. It also is a shutoff valve for the guest house. We've chose that one because that is a true one inch line coming off of the two inch main. We were able to find the main water line coming in, which is that big old monster right there, that two inch main. And then they only used one inch to get main power into the house. Kind of small in my opinion, but whatever. They seem to got the wires through just fine. I got pretty much everything backfilled yesterday, at least up to the first lift to cover our water line. And then we're going to throw our, oh jeez. And then we're gonna throw our electrical conduit on top. So the boys are just going through right now, make sure all this is like nice and perfectly smooth for that pipe to lay on. We're gonna get our vault built today and then we're gonna completely backfill this whole thing and finally get rid of this big old hole in my yard. First thing on the vault here is we're going to snip about right there of that inch and a quarter line. We've notched out the uh, leftover of the broken block that we're using to kind of create the vault. That way the conduit can just pass through the block and it's not like got the block sitting on it or there's a weird gap. See how the new cutter does on inch and a quarter. Like butter. Easy. Now hopefully this is where my master plan kind of comes into play. So my goal is, I'm gonna use these sweeps right here. Oh, if I can reach. We're gonna put one on each end of the conduit. Obviously this will be centered up. We just gotta drag these pipes a little bit. So there'll be another one coming up here. I'm then gonna hole saw into the bottom of this sealed box, run a male fitting, if we can still, you know, gender the fittings, up inside of there through my two holes. And then I bought some female fittings that I'm just gonna cut this top off of. And I'm gonna use those to tighten down and basically seal that lower part there. Um, I'll probably end up obviously putting some sealant around that as well. This will create my junction box. So if we ever wanna add anything in the future, we just pop another hole and well, I guess from the top, we pop a hole. We run up another piece of conduit and we can branch off of this power if we want. Now, most of the properties I've been on out here, kind of what they do is they do something similar to this, but they'll just pull the wire up and then maybe loop it back through or they'll just pull the wire up and then kind of like, Use some waterproof wire nuts. Hopefully they're waterproof, I don't know. Not my style, I wanna put it in a sealed box, that way we never really have to worry about it. All right, we got our holes drilled. Let's see if they fit here. We'll pull off our females that are gonna lock it in. Obviously this is gonna be straight, but there we go. Look at that, perfect. Este es diferente, ¿no? Ah,
That's what I get for not paying attention. Si, pero ahorita no necesito. O corte aquí, ponme otra vez. All right, guys, I screwed up. I wasn't paying attention. I glued the female end on instead of the male end. We are in California. Maybe that'll just identify as a male. Not sure. So we're gonna have to cut off this whole sweep and redo it. All right, so let's make sure we still fit here. Slide this booger a little towards us. Let's go. So that's how our box is gonna sit. Again, if we ever need to come in and grab uh, power and split it off of this, we just come in from the top, wholesale out another one, and we can run a sweep in here. This will be all gravel, so it won't be an issue of like trying to dig out dirt or anything. We'll just have to dig out the trench on the side here that we're gonna come in from. Put our block in place. And we're kind of locking in our vault here. We're gonna cut off this three-quarter line that we have stubbing up because yesterday I didn't have um, enough three-quarter to get it to the height I wanted. Today we do. So there's probably gonna be some water coming out. Abel just pressure tested this whole setup again, but let's go high here. Woo! <laughs> Wasn't expecting that much air to come up, but apparently that thing was just a big old geyser of air pocket. Now Abel went ahead and trimmed down the non-binary connectors here for us. Um, and we kept the uh, sits down to P end. I, I don't know anymore. Screw those on right there and that should lock our box in place perfectly. Pubs, what are you doing, dude? You just, you inspecting the pipe? Oh guys, I guess we got a new inspector out here. Pubs, what are you doing? What do you think? We looking good? We got the spigot on, the spigot good? Is that a good position? You happy with it? You good? I don't know how you're getting out of here. You're gonna have to figure that out on your own, but you ain't walking this way, buddy. So this is gonna get all backfilled with gravel all the way up to about the top of this block, and then our box will go over top. Probably throw a little more in there once the box is on. That way this thing doesn't become a complete snake pit. Regardless, the snakes will have a nice area. They'll have power if they want to hook up a TV or something. Uh, they'll have water. Just like that, we've got our mini vault here. So again, this will have a little water spigot in it just in case we need water somewhere out here. I wanted it all below grade. That way the animals don't come around and mess with it instead of having a spigot sticking up that they're just gonna come break off. So we left it down below. Not like it's something we're gonna use very often, if ever, but it's here because, well, might as well put one in. Now we just gotta uh, backfill the rest. So I'm gonna bring it up about, whew. Oh, we got a good pressure here. That's what we're talking about right there. All right, let's cut this off and not get too wet. So we're gonna backfill this another probably foot, foot and a half. And then we're gonna put caution tape just down in the trench. That way, if we're ever digging out here again and we hit the caution tape, we know don't go any further. There's electrical and water buried below you. Well, it's confirmed, guys. Bubbles is definitely a special inspector. If you've ever been on a job site where they gotta be on site all day watching you work, we all know they like to set up a chair in the shade somewhere. If I scratch you, you gonna sign us off? We did good? Yeah, we did good? Oh yeah, right there by the horns. Right there by the horns, that's the spot. Guys, I love it when a plan comes together. Now we got water at the center point here. Abel is wetting everything down because we're gonna be getting ready to backfill here pretty soon. But right now, I'm gonna drain out the last little bits that are in this transfer tank. Hopefully this uh, power cable is long enough here. Now that she's in the back of the bed. Um, we're probably gonna start trenching that last little section up there before we do the full backfill. Right. I don't think we got a whole lot of diesel in here, but let's find out. Oh, 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 there we go, there we go, maybe. Just feel like we need to tilt the tank a little bit. Certified tank tilter here. I'll crush it, there we go. There we go. Now we're flowing some diesel.
Now we went ahead and got, this is gonna be our temporary water setup. Um, eventually once we figure out where the spigots and everything are gonna go and where our sprinkler valves are gonna go, we're gonna shoot this thing closer to the wall and basically attach it to the wall. But for now, we want the big one inch valve. We're gonna be using a lot of water when we're backfilling and bringing the grate up in here. Woo, am I glad to finally see this hole in the ground pretty much buried, just going through right now, getting everything covered, kind of regrading it out. I don't have a skid steer, so doing the best we can with the old backfield blade there on the excavator. But look at what is showing up right now, guys. Look at that beast. Just drive that on down to Meth and Watch. This thing needs a bath. I know, I'm thinking about it. So me and James live close to each other, but not that close to each other. You know when this thing fires up. This thing is loud. I'll rip it down the alleyway right here if you want to get it real quick. Absolutely, go for it. All right, yeah. <laughs> That thing sounds so good with the come and swap in it. <laughs> That's the sound of America right there. Now, if any of you guys are interested in that beautiful come and swapped K30, once that thing gets cleaned up, it is an awesome truck. I believe if it hasn't already sold by the time this video goes live, James is selling that truck. Listen to that thing. Listen to that thing. You guys need that. Hit him up um, at Mr. Get Muddy on Instagram and uh, shoot him an offer. But that thing ain't gonna be cheap. There's a lot of time, money, and work into that thing. It really is the little things that excite me. Um, seeing our little mini vault here done. Super, super rad. Look at that. Fresh water out of here power if we ever need to add on to it i'm taking all these little victories because the big one's going to be the entrance being done but we're still you know quite a few projects out from being that but hey we got water down there we're almost tied in with power down there ran short on a couple sticks of conduit and with that we're going to wrap up as always thank you guys so much for watching if you're not subscribed already please click the subscribe button now that you do not miss out on any future content don't forget to give this video a like a thumbs up don't forget to check out workforapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life you gotta be willing to work for it you guys are the best i'm out damn uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.